Hi guys, in this video we're going to be making Officer Clawhauser as a cake. I'm using an 8 inch Victoria sponge and I've actually got a 10 inch cake drum but my cake itself is on an 8 inch cake board so the same size as the cake but I found the 8 inch one was big enough. You'll see what I mean as we go further through the video. So print off a picture of your character. So I've gone for Officer Clawhauser because I thought he had a nice round face so I wouldn't have to change the shape of the cake too much. So print off your picture and I'm going to trim around the edge getting the basic shape of his head and I'm going to cut off the ears. Now my cake's quite big so you can print off a larger picture if you want it to be the same size as your cake or of course you can always have a smaller cake but you can print off the picture to whatever size you want. The cake looks quite firm this is because I've put it in the freezer for half an hour before I've cut into it. Now if I don't do that I sometimes find when I do cut it up it crumbles quite a bit and can tear rather than giving me nice sort of sharp edges so the freezer just firms it up a little bit for when we're working with it like this so try and go all the way around the edge following the line of your little template that you've cut out and then once I've done that I'm trimming off the top corners so that I'm rounding off those edges giving him a bit more shape around his cheeks and his head so just check it matches everywhere and can you see the top of his head slightly set back from his nose so I'm just trimming a little bit out of the top of the head and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit out as well where his eyes go so he's got a bit more of a dip so I'm sort of taking out two little triangle shapes for the eyes leaving a bridge in the middle for his nose just checking the line up with where they do on their template so that's our basic shape now I'm going to be making some buttercream for this so I've just got some buttercream, literally my buttercream is just icing sugar with a little bit of butter. I'll put up a recipe for the actual sponge cake and also the uh, buttercream that I use in the description box below the video. But you're just going to spread this buttercream all over the cake giving it a nice even layer. Try and get it as smooth as you can. The odd little bump I don't worry about too much because when I put the fondant on I'm going to be able to smooth that out still. Now for this I'm using this particular fondant. Again, I'll put links to where I got this from in the description box below. Now it's quite firm is this one, so it needs quite a good knead. And I've just taken a smaller piece that I'm going to actually put in for his nose. Now if you want, you can just add an extra bit of cake to the face. Um, but for this occasion, I've just chosen to use a lump of fondant. So we're going to push that in place where his nose goes. Looking at the template, go for where the palest colour is, so it's just slightly off-white and I'm going to dye my fondant that colour. So I've used a bit of caramel ivory and also a little bit of honey gold together, only a tiny bit. Again, I've put links to these in the description box below. I'm going to roll this out so that it's plenty big enough to go over the cake. You're going to place this over and we're going to smooth it down all the way around, trying not to get any air bubbles underneath your icing. And just give a light press where you put those eye sockets in and then push all the way around the edges. Try not to get any creases around the edges once you smooth down the fondant, just trim around the edge all the way around. You can see the 8 inch cake board now that I had originally put my cake on. And because it actually is big enough to be larger than the cake itself, this is when I decided I would leave it on this cake board rather than putting it on the larger 10 inch one. So just make sure everything's nice and rounded and smoothed down. And what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm cutting up my template a little bit more just so that I get an idea of where to put eyes and nose so I'm going to cut out with the eyes to start with and then I'm going to cut around the shape of the nose and then you see I can hold this against the face and I can put little marks on where the eyes are going to go and also for the nose so I've just got a balling tool here to just push in a little bit deeper where those eyes are and then we'll make the eyes at the very end and slot them into the gaps that we're making so I'm just pinching now above each eye socket just slightly to create little lines where his eyebrows are going to go so I've put the eyes in place, just the paper ones we've cut out, and using a modelling tool I'm just drawing around the edge to get my little line. And then you can take off the little paper eyes, and then I'm just, with the other end of my modelling tool, pushing deeper into those marks that we've made. And draw around the nose, just making a little line again so we know where to put the nose when we've made the nose. So I'll cut the nose itself off so I can draw a top line and a bottom line of it. Again, we're just going to push this in slightly and indent it. Now we're going to dye the nose with a brown, but first I'll just add those little lines under his eyes, just again with my modelling tool. So I've mixed some brown, you see it's not a really deep colour, 
but we darken it afterwards when we brush colour onto the whole thing. So I've tried to shape it to the same as that little paper cut out. Mine's a little bit bigger, but I'm not too worried about that. I'm just going to push it in a little bit more, seeing if we can make it look a little bit smaller when it's on the face. So I've put that in that dint that we made earlier. And then I'm going to push a little line going up the centre of the nose. Now, I'm just adding an extra piece above his nose. I think it just needs to stick out a little bit more. So I'm just cut that so that it fits in above his nose and give that a good firm press down. And where it sort of comes level with the eyes, I've cut that off. Then we're going to give him a couple of nostrils. Again, just push a little line in either side of the nose with your modelling tool. Then we're going to draw in his little mouth. So a little line down from the nose. And then we'll start to come either side with the modelling tool. And just underneath the mouth that I'm drawing, I'm just pushing it down a little bit with my finger so that his bottom lip is sort of set back or his chin is set back a little bit further than the top. Now this particular fondant's quite good because it is quite firm so you can push quite hard on it without it tearing. So at the far end of his mouth I'm just going to push in a little bit with my modelling tool and my finger so it looks like he's got a smile. So now we're going to add lots of fur. We want to get rid of that smooth look and texture him so he looks like he is furry. So I'm starting around the mouth and again I'm just using that modelling tool and I'm just putting in lots of tiny little lines. Now this is the time consuming bit on this cake so it's up to you how many lines you want to put on. I've pretty much covered most of his face. I started with small tiny short lines around like the nose and the mouth where his hair would be quite short and then as we're coming out to the bottom of his chin and the far ends of his like cheeks I can do those lines a little bit deeper and a little bit longer where the hair would be longer in length. So that's it now done with all the hair. The fun part, right, I like this bit best is the colouring it up and I'm just using rainbow dusts which are edible powders again I'll put links in the description box below to where you can get them from. I've got a brown and a black. I am mixing my black and brown together so I get really rather than being a really strong black, it's toned down a little bit with the brown. And I'm concentrating mainly on that little line below his nose and around the mouth. And then we're also gonna try and get inside his nostrils and around the very edge of the nose, the brown bit of the nose. They're my main dark areas, other than his leopard spots. So we'll put the leopard spots on shortly. But we want to now deepen the color of his face. So I've got a mix of a few different colors. I've got a gold rush skin tone and primrose. Now it's got quite a lot of the primrose yellow in and the colour does look quite yellow at the moment but when we get the leopard spots on and a bit more shading it does look right I promise. And of course you can use a bigger brush than me for this bit if you want. So with this yellowy colour concentrate a lot on the top of his head and his cheeks gradually bringing it in but not as far as the mouth because we want to leave the nose and mouth area or below the nose and mouth area quite pale. So now I have picked up a bigger brush and we're going to go over with a little bit of the brown and black but don't put too much on your brush otherwise it will give you a really strong colour. And we're just going to start shading especially around the very outside edges where we want it to be a little bit deeper. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of black now just on those lines that we marked under his eyes. Just going to deepen the colour under his mouth a little bit. Now using the black and brown again just paint on where those eyebrows are. I think my hand's in the way a bit there. So these powders are just being painted on dry. I haven't mixed them with anything and just make sure your brush is actually dry. I'm mainly using black with just the tiniest bit of brown mixed in now to paint on the little spots. So we're just dusting those on. You can do them in different sizes. Keep the smaller dots nearer the centre of the face and you can do the dots a little bit larger as you go closer to the outside edge. So it's starting to take shape a lot more now. So for the ears, I've taken the same colour as what I was using for the face in the fondant, rolled it out and again we've got some of the leftover from the nose, I'm going to roll that out and I'm going to try and roll them together and I'm going to cut out a circle, half that to create two semicircles. I made mine a little bit too big so I'm just going to go over with a smaller circle and I'm going to put lines now on these ears, on the front and the back so they look a bit more furry. Then we'll add a bit of the colour dust we've been using. So you can use the black and the brown again to deepen the outside edges. So the brown side can go a lot darker. And add just a little bit on the inside edge of the pale side. Fold them in half so they instantly become a bit more ear-like. And to attach them I'm just going to put a tiny bit of water on the bottom edge, so the straight edge of that ear. And then you can push that to the side of his head. And same for the other one. Make sure they're pushed on nice and firmly. 
So for the eyes, I've just got some white fondant. Start with a ball and then make it a little bit more teardrop shaped. Use your little paper ones as a guide for the shape. And then you see you can push that into the little eye socket that you made earlier. You want a little bit of black. Roll this nice and thin and then you can put this around the very outside edge of the eye. Your little black line wants to be thinner in the inside corner of the eye and it can be a little bit thicker on the outside edge. Just give it a good push down in place. Same for the other one. And then I've got a little bit of brown. Cutting out two circles. I'm going to stick these into the eyes. I've just used water to stick these in with. Now they're quite pale but we will paint them up a little bit deeper in a minute. So now for the painting I'm going to use a chestnut brown. And I've just mixed the food colouring with a tiny bit of water and you're just going to paint around the very edge of those eyes, just deepening the outside bit. So we want some more of our black, roll it out thin. I'm going to cut two more circles, but just make sure these circles are smaller than the brown circles that we used. And just try and push those into the centre of the brown bit. He starts to come to life a little bit more now and he's almost finished. I'm just adding a dab of water in each eye, ready to put a tiny little dot of white fondant in. So one in that eye and one in the other eye. And that's him finished. I hope you like him. Do be sure to check out my other Zootopia cake videos. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video and would like to see more, please click on the images of the other videos suggested. Also, please do subscribe to my channel using the button at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. You can also visit my cake website and my Facebook page to see more cakes and ideas.